National Spaghetti Day. Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Chef Sketty. Who are you? This is Kevin Gia, Kevin Gia, everyone. Kevin Gia, I think. This is my husband, Kevin Gia. And today, it's National Sketty Day. You ready to make some sketty? I thought that was a trick question. We're going to actually make the sauce for the spaghetti because I'm assuming everyone knows how to read directions on their pasta. It's boil your pasta the way you want. We're just going to make the sauce today. Ingredients I have. I want to talk a lot about that. Well, not like a lot, a lot, but a little bit. Lately, we all know ingredients are like super expensive. So a go-to spaghetti sauce recipe for me to say, okay, here's my go-to recipe sauce. I don't have a go-to recipe sauce. When I make spaghetti, I have what I have on hand. As long as I have something to sauce pasta with, it's spaghetti sauce to me. Your classic, what you would consider like a Sunday gravy, this is the aim, the angle today, meat. You have every region of Italy that discusses and talks and converses and goes at it. Hi, Anne-Marie. We're talking about spaghetti. It's National Spaghetti Day. And just a lot of families around Italy, they bicker back and forth about what goes in a sauce or a Sunday gravy, or whatever you want to call it, sketty sauce. It doesn't matter. We're doing some spaghetti sauce today for National Sketty Day. Are you with me? So being the fact that ingredients cost so much these days, like you shouldn't have expectations. Pasta, the cheapest I can find pasta is 59 cents for one pound at Target. Pasta is going up a lot in price. So maybe spaghetti, like what was for our family a once a week thing has now turned into more like a once every other month thing because of the cost. Um, and one of the number one questions I have on my channel is Chef Sketty, you don't have a Sketty video. Well, here it is. Today's January 4th, 2023. Today is National Sketty Day. So I've waited almost a year to make this video, quietly, secretly. If I have a name of Chef Sketty, don't you think I have a Chef Sketty video? So this is like primarily your Sketty video. How you doing, Anne-Marie? And everyone watching, welcome on in. I am Chef Sketty, disheveled. Clearly, I'm disheveled. So here's another thing when we make Sketty. Don't make Sketty in your Sunday best. I mean, make sure you have... A, a, some work shirts or something because when you open sauce you're always going to get splatter when you make sketty okay honey no worries good luck on your appointment whatever you're having an appointment for hon okay i love seeing you here sweetie so we're going to talk a little about sketty i haven't made any notes so i could be going you know everyone knows sketty by now i'm kind of like a duck. If I see a duck, there's a duck, and I'll go off into another conversation. So I'm going to try to really stay focused. We're not even going to, like, say what a real recipe for making sketty is. We're just going to look at my ingredients real quick, and then I'm going to get to cooking. Hi, Joyful Julie. Nice to see you, hon. We're talking about the cost of making spaghetti. Back in the day, it used to be really cheap, and to make a homemade sauce is not the cheapest thing anymore. And I don't have a grand total here of what I've spent. It's basically what I have on hand. I haven't gone out and bought anything specifically. Maybe the tomato paste. I did buy that specifically. And yes, the red wine. But we can all say that we can go to the Dollar Tree for $1.25 and buy a jar of sauce. And they'll sell you a pound of pasta there for $1.25. So $2.50, you can have spaghetti. It will feed a family of four. It will probably feed a family of six to seven if you're moderate. And if you don't have that refined palate either, I mean, if you don't care about eating that quality, then go for it. My family likes it when I make a homemade sauce. Do I use San Marzano tomatoes? Absolutely 100%. All the time? Yes. It does make that much of a difference. These are certified San Marzano tomatoes, and you will be tricked at the grocery store into San Marzano style. Welcome in, Bud Files. 
it doesn't matter. I've used the San Marzano style. It doesn't deliver the same taste because or flavor because San Marzano, these are, this is a specific whole different, I could make a whole different video on San Marzano tomato. It's the region of Italy. I always use San Marzano. And then what, what I have on hand, you know, do, is this San Marzano tomato paste? No, but Cento is an awesome product. So for like under $2, you can get Cento. This is a squeezable tomato paste and it's four ounces, which is really good under $2. You can make a sauce right out of this also. Hi, Gray. Welcome in, honey. Or a pizza sauce or, or whatever. Sometimes I just like the taste of tomato and I mix it with a little cream cheese and some Italian seasoning and put it on a Ritz cracker. And I've shown you other examples of sauces I have on hand. Just a basic sauce. This is probably not from Italy, but it is from Ohio. So I've used this before and I probably won't use this today. I just want to show you a lot of options you have. I don't have a $1.25 sauce from the dollar store, but I have a really cheap version of diced tomato. And this is a a little bit of this and garlic and a little of your own seasonings, whatever you want. This is a maybe a dollar at Aldi. I could be wrong. I didn't look at the, but we know that these are cheap, right? This is your basic 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes. This will also make sauce. Are we getting the drift? We can make sauce with whatever we want, right? I mean, you can make a simple white sauce, a simple roux and salt and pepper it and call that spaghetti sauce in all honesty. So hi, everybody. Nice to see you all here. I want to say hi to my mom, and I love you so much, mom. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you for coming. Everyone else, welcome on in. Today's National Sketty Day. Okay, I'm clearing my area here so I can get set up. A lot of people use the 40 cents, maybe, can of paste. A lot of people use this. I probably won't today because I might be adding a little paste to my San Marzano's. A lot of people also disagree and agree with uh, acid and, and some sweet with their sauce. A lot of people insist upon a pinch of sugar, a pinch of brown sugar, whatever sweetener. I, I usually do put a little sugar in there because it cuts the acid out of the tomato, especially the canned tomato. My salt and pepper I have. A lot of people like to put veggies in their spaghetti sauce, garlic and onion, which I have here today. And if I feel like putting it in, I'm going to. Most likely I'm going to put garlic in there. But I don't always put onion in there. I usually buy two or three onion per week and I'm, I'm pretty uh, savvy and I like to be very frugal with my fresh veggies. I, I try to see how long I can let things last feeding four people. You can season your sauce always with a little pepper. I have some peppers here. They're called crushed red pepper. Let me read the chat for a sec. There you go, Anne-Marie. Hi, Dan. Happy Wednesday, honey. Happy National Sketty Day to you. I don't know in the UK if you celebrate National Sketty Day, but you're welcome to come on in and celebrate with me. Okay, this is uh, not a Lee Crusade but it is a cast iron skillet, enamel coated, and it's highly seasoned. This is clean-ish, clean enough for today. I can go at it and make it perfect, but I don't have one of those Mr. Eraser things. So what I like to do is I like to braise my, so uh, my meat. I do not like meat in sauce. As a kid, I loved it. It's not my favorite thing anymore. Definitely the pepperoni. But I'm going to put meat in here just because my family loves it. So we're going to do a meat sauce. Myself and my daughter, we prefer more of a caprese sauce where it's just pasta and, and a, little, a little red sauce. And I'm good. A little salad and garlic bread. And I'm, I'm perfect. Um, also, my pasta I've chosen. We'll get to that. So we're going to braise some meat today in olive oil. Hello, hello, hello. Garlic, salt, and sugar. Right, Joyful Julie. Whatever you want to add to spaghetti sauce. If you don't have tomatoes, it's still spaghetti sauce. 
And if you don't have spaghetti, then you can look at your ziti and call it spaghetti, and it's not going to argue back with you, okay? I mean, trust me on this one. I'm not a big fan of Italian seasonings. I don't like the taste of basil, but I have it here today just because other f members of my family do. Hi, CNC Farm. Welcome in, honey. And he, he doesn't tell the difference. This is Kevin Gia back here, lingering. You want to open a bottle of wine? Sure. Do you need to add wine to your spaghetti sauce? I mean, I'm going to go on and on through this video. No, you don't. I just happen to have a bottle of red wine. Cheap wine. He calls it cheap wine. Is it screw cap? No, it's actually got a cork. So oh, yeah. it's pretty sophisticated. It's got well, the I cork. Know, I bought it though. But this, the label <laughs> fell off. It was raining when he bought it. But it is um, Menage a Trois, Midnight Red Wine from California. So I might be deglazing with a little red wine today. Yeah. Hey, uh, Bug Bouncer, how you doing? Four dollars. <laughs> Where'd you get this? Downtown Produce? Walmart. Walmart. Four bucks at Walmart. Do you know the, the right way? You want me to show you the proper way to open a bottle of wine? I'll let everyone know. <laughs> we want to always open wine right before we're going to use it. So let's hold off. That's the number one rule. And this wine cork here is like 30 years old. This is from when I was in culinary school in West Palm. I've had it all these years. It survived the hurricane. See, the hurricane can't take everything from me. Okay, we're going to get to the wine later. We're heating up. Woo, heat up. I got a couple little things here. I just purchased one of these, like the hamburger chopper. I, I was like, oh, should I do meatballs? And I'm like, eh, it's a lot of work, you know. Like, it's a new year. You shouldn't be working so hard, you know. So I'm going to do a meat sauce. And I purchased this. And apparently... It's going to take some time off the crumbling process. So we'll see. I'm getting the meat. What do we have, Chef Skeddy? I pulled out what I had in my fridge for National Skeddy Day, which is some grass-fed hamburger is what I have here. I have Publix mild Italian sausage, one pound. I don't like sausage. It's going in there because I like my husband, and he loves sausage. And a little cup of pork loins here. It's over a pound for sure. And do you have to add all this to your sketty? No. I am because I'm just getting rid of whatever I have here for National Skeddy Day. So, hi, everyone. I have also a packet of broth, like concentrated broth. So a lot of people add concentrated broth to sauce, and I'm not going to because of the sodium content. Acid is another thing. I have a little red wine here, a packet of red wine. You can add acid to a spaghetti sauce. My favorite is white wine vinegar. It's awesome, especially in coleslaw, making a coleslaw dressing. But I always love adding balsamic vinaigrette to my sauce that I'm actually going to end up braising the meat and then cooking the sauce in my Instapot today because I have a few appointments. I'm, uh, people are coming, I have a car that I'm selling. So one of my cars I have got to get rid of. I was told by where I live, I cannot have three vehicles, which is fine. No worries, just more money in my pocket. I own this car, so. I said, fine, I'll just sell one of my cars. And then the other car, I have another car. My cat, Kevin Gia is putting his Carmen Gia up for sale soon. So uh, it's a 69 Carmen Gia? Yeah, well, yeah, we have a 69 Carmen Gia. He doesn't want to, but, you know, he's got a wife. So we got we to gotta work things out. A lot of people like to add chili sauce to their spaghetti. So if you want chili sauce, think of it and... Get in your pantry and see what you have. These pantry items are from HelloFresh. They send so many product from HelloFresh that you actually have leftover. Here's the creme de la creme for me, excuse me, outside of the San Marzano tomato. I This is like Italian umami. This is your anchovy paste. This came for Christmas this year. My little Skeddy got me this as a gift. Isn't that nice? 
So we're definitely going to be adding anchovy paste. And do you have to add anchovy paste to your sketty? No. Parsley is another huge ingredient with Italian cooking. Fresh is always best, but today I have, hey, Brenda, dried parsley. And of course, I use parsley in every meal I cook. I just love parsley. It's pretty hot. I have to start cooking. Let's start cooking this pork so I don't have to touch anything or wash my hands unless I have to. But we want to braise some meat for our sauce today. I'm going to cover it. It's really hot. Well, I get some veg ready. So a little restaurant secret about braising. Um, sometimes your meat sticks, right? And we don't want to always add a ton of sodium to food, but salt on the oil will prevent the sticking. So we're going to salt it and I'm going to pepper it. I could have seasoned it before I added it to the pan. I mean, a lot of people do. Do you have to cook like me? Nope. You cook the way you want to cook. I mean, I'm not, like I've said in a lot of my cooking videos, I'm not here when I go live to instruct you how to do something. And this is the way it has to be done. I've always said you make your spaghetti the way you want to make your spaghetti. And I'm going to make my dinner the way I'm going to make my dinner because it's what I have on hand. So we don't ever have like a recipe here in my house. Hey, Dave, how you doing? How's it going up there in old jackass flats? Down here in Melbourne, people are weird as usual. You know, you know how it goes in Melbourne. I'm cooking on level two and I'm getting some things ready to make my sauce. How's it going, Brenda? Oh yeah, delicious. Hey, CNC farm. How you doing, honey? I mean, a lot of people would be like, wow, anchovy paste, a big pass for me and I get it but you don't understand a lot of sauces that you're eating in restaurants or, or pizza sauces major chains this is one of their ingredients that's why a lot of you know market marketers know exactly what is addictive on your taste buds and anchovy paste is definitely going to put notes in your mouth that you didn't know were there if you've ever not tried it and you think this is going to be really, really gross, then if you've ever eaten any major corporate pizza company, spaghetti sauce on their pizza, you have eaten anchovy paste. I am unique. Did I call myself weird? Yes, I am a unique individual for sure. Absolutely. Um, do I want to add onion? I don't know. Maybe Mr. Sketty will peel an onion for me. I will cut up some garlic. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the meat. It's like if you burn it, that's kind of even better. Oh, well, I have pepperoni. I mean, I always like cook things with a lot of flavor. So we want to get a crust going here, you know? Here's some pepperoni. I would normally use the, the long stick, but this is leftover from New Year's Eve. So we'll add a little pepperoni to the sauce. How much ever I feel like, not too much really, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. A baker's dozen, I guess, of slices. There's some flavor going in there. Did I pepper it enough? Maybe not. 
Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Just making what I think is spaghetti tonight. This is my, uh, what do you call this thing? My meat. <laughs> I can't think of it right now. Wow. For cutlets, we all know what spaghetti is getting at. Meat powder. That's how I get the garlic. I mean, do you really want to hear the proper way of doing garlic? You'd probably be mortified if I use my kitchen knife, but some I'm so good on a knife I can use my kitchen knife as a as a small veggie peeler. This is an eight-inch chef. See the hard piece there at the end of the bulb? You just want to trim it off. And a lot of people like to cut the top piece off, but it's it's okay. Inside you have a root. Okay, see the green little root? You're supposed to take the root out, even with onion, because there's a lot of, see, said, a lot of even doctors will tell you that eating the root is hard on their digestion, and in a really fancy kitchen, the head chefs, you know, the prep cooks are taught how to properly do this. There's the root. I took it out with my knife here, and you're left with the garlic right so i can chop the garlic i'm just going to cross cut the garlic real quick just a quick cross cut chefs don't usually talk when they're cooking also i know on tv you see chefs talking but in a kitchen uh no that's not the way it is in real life there's a lot of grunting um just fast paced cooking going on Concentration. You have to concentrate when you cook. Here's the sear. See that that nice sear? Oh, the lighting is sucky right now. I didn't feel like getting out my ring light. I put it away. It drives me crazy. It's stupid. Like anyone out there who has a ring light that stays in place, like, let me know. Because I know a lot of you, the ring lights, you know, they just suck. No matter what you pay. Okay, so I'm going to wash my hands. I'll be right back. When you're trained and cooking in the kitchen, you know, you scratch your side of your neck or... Your face, of course, that happens. You know, you got to be trained to wash your hands after you do that. Even when I'm cooking for my family, I keep it as clean as I can. One clove of garlic went in there. And you know what? If you want to add like 12 cloves of garlic, go ahead and do it. Or no garlic. I don't care because it's your skinny. Sear, sear, sear. All I'm adding today are the San Marzano tomatoes. So we'll open those. I will not be adding um, anything else, really. I want the taste of just my seared meat and my San Marzano tomatoes. And the spices I'm going to use are anchovy paste, most likely some red pepper flake, a pinch of sugar. This is for acid, cutting the acid out. Even though the San Marzano, if you don't have sugar, if you can't have sugar, still, it's fine. I'm just doing it because I'm, it's, it's like kind of like a tradition for me. It, it just, I've always done that because basically it's what I was taught. Like to cut out the acid of the can, pinch of sugar, whatever. Um, acid, I, I always cook with acid, so... We have my balsamic vinaigrette drizzle. I'm cooking with olive oil. I, I don't want to feed, I don't want to eat like a dollar store meal. You know, a lot of people are doing that now because the dollar store is offering really good stuff for a buck 25, but it's not always the most enjoyable. It's just like survival food in a way. And today it's National Skeddy Day. So we're going to do the best of the best. 
San Marzano tomatoes. I love these. And there, here's the sauce recipe on the back. It's calling one can, half an onion, two tablespoons of olive oil to obviously saute your onion. They're calling for garlic, fresh basil, oregano, salt and pepper. Yada, yada, yada. Cook it up, cook it up. Da, 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 da. Find some pasta, eat it with some bread. Who cares, right? So now we've got some flavor going on here. You hear that? Oh, yeah. And all of it is going into the instant pot. <laughs> I've got some spaghetti, and I also have these noodles. So my, my family, they have different what they love. My little spaghetti men. My men, excuse me, they like basic thin spaghetti. My daughter and I like the long ziti, which I also call like broken noodles. I break them up into like tiny pieces or even, they're hard to break. Like this size, the dish is called broken noodles. So when the pasta water gets going you just break these noodles and it ends up like ziti see all these little pieces go in the pot and they're really really good on homemade sauce like this so that's what i'm having and then the other ones who don't know exactly the best thing in life they're gonna have the spaghetti but no not me not the spaghetti i'm too good for spaghetti Um, I'm not going to get that ready right now. I brought out breadcrumbs because a lot of people, when they cook the crumbled beef, they put breadcrumbs on there to get an extra sear. So that's an option. I'm like cooking the hell out of this today, which is fine. That's what you want to do. I mean, you don't want to flip it twice like I did, but it's okay. We're going to turn it off for a second. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to add sausage to this recipe today, but I promised my husband I'd give him sausage. So we're going to make, I'm going to, I think I'm going to make um, like sausage, casing with sausage for you so it's not crumbled through the sauce. That's what I'm going to do. Just make him a couple. My hands I just washed. I'm going to wash them again. Okay, so this is off. That's where I real sausage right. We're just going to make a couple sausages for him while it burns me. I'm used to being burned. Anyone who is kind of afraid of cooking like this, uh, don't do what I do, basically. Um, small children, obviously, don't do anything Chef Getty does. So I got a couple sausages I'm making for my husband. Give him a sear. How's everybody doing, huh? Huh? How you doing? How you doing? National Skitty Day. You know, as restaurant chefs, we're not supposed to be like, ew, I don't like that. But I'm old enough to say, ew, I don't like that. And I've put a lot of time into restaurants, and I've worked as head chef in many restaurants. So if I don't like something, it's not going in the menu. And that's just the way it is. I have a pretty sophisticated palate, so I know what's good. Okay, three sausages. Here's some extra. And a good idea that we do here, I save this, and we'll make like queso. That's really good as queso. I'm going to wash my hands. Bucket of sanitized water here. Okay. Exactly, CNC Farm. Everybody is a chef, and I'm not going to debate, you know, oh, how long I've gone to school for, as opposed to other people don't feel like they're chefs because they haven't gone to school. Um, if you are cooking in your kitchen for yourself or your family, you are a chef. That's just the way it is. 
The only difference is, is I know like safety, I safety serve is like restaurant. Like I know how to work in a restaurant. That's the only difference. I have like safety serve and you have to just know the, your local laws. So I'm going to open up my San Marzano and get them ready and show you what they look like. And you know what? I'll open up the diced tomatoes and show you the difference. And I'm not using these diced tomatoes, but I'll open them up. And what we'll do is put them in a plastic container or I have the airtight containers, but you don't want to store any food in your refrigerator after you've opened a tin. So I'm going to put this with the sausage here in the queso and add like some jalapeno and da 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 because it will be what today's Wednesday that will be fine when I put it in the refrigerator a couple days so on Friday night when we're coming home and it's like appetizer pizza night I've got my queso going in the um or the insta pot or the the crock pot you know something to eat before we all get our pizza and our movie time or whatever you're doing you know that's what I do in my house so I'll show you the difference I don't mind opening the product that's basically what we're going back to. And I have everything in place here. So I don't have to look around. Okay. San Marzano. Tomato. Ooh, they're so... It's probably going to fall in my hand. Again, sorry. My lighting sucks, everyone. This is the liquid gold in the tomato world. I don't want to miss a beat of that. I mean, this, even like right out of the can, it's sweet. Like you could literally, I know, I've worked in so many restaurants where a can of San Marzano tomatoes is their only product, especially in Miami. I've worked for some pizza restaurants in Miami where San Marzano product is the only thing that goes on the dough and then cheese. You'd be surprised how little ingredients chefs are actually using. Okay. Wow, look at the coloring going on here. My sausages are coming along. See, I just shaped and formed my own sausage. And yes, I am used to hot oil. Please do not do and cook the way I do. See that? That's a handmade sausage right there. And you don't have to have a casing to make sausage. I just, you know, formed a sausage-like figure because my husband loves sausage and I do not like it. Okay. I'm going to turn the heat on because now we're going to crumble up. What I want to do is I want to use my crumbler I bought at Dollar Tree and see how it works. Because what I usually have always used is just this is my, what I've used for, well over 40 years this spoon is it goes in for repair you can see where i've had it you know sharpened and it's very old okay um sanded they sand this one down this is what i've always used for crumbling burger but i thought i'd try this cheap dollar 25 plastic gadget out for a moment probably one time because i'm so used to my certain things I, you know, use. I'm not heating this up yet. I'm just going to toss some of the meat in my Instapot vessel. Oh, the sear is, I could, I could stand here and sear all around it, but it's just going to fall apart in the sauce anyway. You know what I mean? It's going to come apart. It's not going to stay as a chop. What am I looking for? Yada, yada, yada. Oh, slotted spoon. Slotted spoon. How about this? Whatever. I'm going to put the little pepperonis in here. Everybody having a happy new year? I'm having a new year. Um, it's happy. I wouldn't say everything is going like peachy keen, but... You know, it is what it is. I'm not, like, freaked out about it. I don't get too freaked out about much these days. 
because of my age and where I'm at in my life, I've been lucky enough to be living my best life right now. So there's really no complaints out of me. Oh, you have San Marzano's at your house, at your farm? Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Well, geez, good for you. I'm jealous. But there's no reason to be jealous because if I wanted San Marzano's, right, I could just grow from an heirloom. I grow okay tomatoes. I don't really have the greenest of thumbs. So this is how I store hamburger. I buy the, the square hamburger packs. And this one here I've cut in half. And then here I have one that I've made what I thought I was going to be making hamburgers. So I just froze it. And I think I'm only going to add a two ball. This is not a lot of meat that is going here. I have four people. So based on the fact that there's so much meat going in here, and my daughter and I are not the eat meat eaters, we're not vegetarian at all. I just don't like... Um, ground beef myself it's not a preference of mine and I, I really just prefer like a real nice red sauce some sauteed veggies on pasta myself so that's what I'm gonna do when it's all cooked up I'll just filter it out and yada yada everybody's happy because I like the taste of it I just don't want to be eating like a large amount of meat a lot lately because for health reasons myself yeah that's why there's a few different reasons. Now, obviously, we're cooking the pasta way later. And you all will not be here. We're just going to do the sauce. Okay, so we're trying out this gadget of crumbling. And wow, wow. It really is kind of cool because now I see why so many people use this on YouTube. Okay, this is cool. A lot of people um, on YouTube have these because they do like the taco night or whatever they're frying with ground beef. And I haven't bought one because like I'm old school. It's like this still works, so I don't need a new tool. But clearly I did because wow, this really is cool. Awesome. It really did crumble it up very quickly, a lot faster than if I were going to be standing here and kind of cross-cutting. So, yeah, I like it. Again, I don't have a specific way that I'm going to do this. It's just what I'm doing today. CNC Farm, we're a lot alike. I had a gift card from Dollar Tree this year and I noticed this and I said, well, I wouldn't buy it in real life because my spoon, my 30 year old spoon still works. And I agree. So this is why I have this product because of the gift card. And I've sauteed and braised the beef a lot of people will take out the fat and drain the beef, and yeah, that's great for you. But today, for me, I'm going to put the fat in there because um, I don't feel like draining it, and that's really the only reason why I'm not doing that. Do I drain the beef ever? Um, not usually. I'm not a beef drainer type person or a meat washer, uh, especially that's a whole nother video like should you wash chicken or not wash chicken like again it's what i'm taught in it to learn in a kitchen for safety serve reasons as opposed to what you do in your kitchen are two totally different things that's the great thing about being a human everybody can do as they want it just once you're willing to accept that in your life like hey i can do whatever i want because i'm me you're going to be a real happy camper trust me on this 25 years, honey. Wow. That spoon must have made a lot of good meals. Basically, the oil in here is from a little bit of olive oil I've used. 
in whatever meat has rendered out of this meat I've been using today. Yeah. Now, normally, I would cook my spaghetti sauce on the stove top and slowly cook it. Did you see that oil hit me right in the face? Yeah, I'm getting it. Um, but I'm going to use my Instapot because my Instapot does deliver the all day cook thing. Okay. I don't know on what setting. I don't even know how to work it the right way. I always do like pressure cook for like what I think. I don't ever use the other buttons like soup or stew or meat. I don't, they don't seem to work as right as just using the pressure cook like button. And then in your mind going, okay, this might be like an hour and 45. Like I did a ham soup the other night. I added the the bone from our holiday ham, one bag of peas and the veggies, right? The water, I set it on pressure cook. I had no recipe to go on. It's just based on like what I think was gonna work. I set it for like an hour and 15 minutes and then I just let it warm. And using that warming method, it was like the best pea soup I've ever had. I couldn't believe it. So it can sit there for warm like all day, like a crock pot. And there is a crock pot button on those. But again, it just doesn't give you that nice ring around the edge of the pot. You know what I'm talking about? That one that you spread on your garlic bread. That's the, what that does on the warming. Okay. We can open the wine now if you want to know the right way to open wine. I've served a lot of wine in restaurants table side, and I've never made a mistake, but there's always room for wiggle. So here's my sharp knife. A lot of times this has lead in it, so we want to just get this off real quick. And you down to the cork. There's a reason why there's a divot here. This is how you hold the wine. Depending on what handed you are, you can hold the wine and talk to somebody. I, I don't like, I like a little bit more stability. Are you, are you here? Do you want to open this or shall I? You're going here. So this is what this knife is for here is taking out the label. But this is 40 years old because this is from when I was in culinary school. And if anybody recognizes the pink and knows where this might be from, the labels uh, come off. But um, I don't know. Email me if you think you know where this is from. But you probably have no clue, so don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. That's just stupid I even brought it up. Okay, so opening a bottle of wine. A lot of people have the fancier things. This is very... Uh, um, this little item here means a lot to me, okay? This is like one of my best friends. I've had this since I was very young. It's one of the only things I have from when I was a young child. Okay. You take your wine and you want to open your wine right before you're going to deglaze and give it a minute to breathe. So here we go. So you center the cork. You center the cork and you get it going, okay? You're not going to get hurt. You just leave your finger here so you know where the center is. You see how my finger is right there? Now I know where the center is. And you lower this piece. It's going to grab the neck, the bottleneck. And you just keep going. Turn, turn until it engages each other. And you pop it right off, okay? See how that works? That's how you use an old-fashioned wine cork. And you can save your wine corks. These days, especially the cheaper wines, are the plastic corking. But, you know, they did their best over at Menage a Trois. Menage a Trois wines .com. I got it for four bucks at Walmart. And there used to be this old saying, like, oh, never cook with wine that you wouldn't drink. Oh, Okay, whatever. Today I'm cooking with wine that I have. And I'm sure it's a fine wine. You know, it's got the acid in there, you know, that I want. So where did I put my anchovy paste? 
Here's some umami for anyone out there interested in umami. Okay, have a great time cleaning. I'm going to be cleaning a little bit. There's nothing that I do other than like act like, okay, that seems good. Maybe a little more. It looks like a tablespoon. I gave it a pinch. Most people are not going to be running out and using that product. Most people's hands are two tablespoons. Okay. You can go ahead and measure out two tablespoons, put it in your palm. It's probably going to equal your palm. So we're going with one tablespoon. I did half a palm of the pepper flakes because they do offer a little bit of a punch and not everybody likes them in their teeth. So we're going to just get all of that going, going, going. In a real world, and most likely after I end this live, I'm going to add more garlic. I just don't feel like standing here and like, you, you know what I mean? It's going to take a few minutes to do the garlic. This is why I've only added one clove. Most likely I'm going to use an entire bulb of garlic and add it to my sauce. So that's what we're going to do. Here's some sugar. I just take the pinch of sugar and put it right on top of the San Marzano tomatoes. And in my opinion, they're, they're sweet enough. And if you don't have the sugar, you don't have the sugar, you know? I mean, what are you going to do? Chef Sketty didn't, you know, I don't have sugar, so I can't make spaghetti sauce. Chef Sketty used sugar. Oh, my gosh. The world is not going to end. So what? Do not make the same thing I make. This is just a suggestion. Anybody who cooks on TV or on YouTube, it's just a suggestion, everyone. It's not like you have to go out and add certain product to your recipe just because that chef you're watching adds that. If you want to make it verbatim to what I did, I mean, great. That's awesome for you. But you don't have to. No pressure over here at Chef Sketty's house. I go around the pan like one time for wine. A lot of people add wine um the whole entire bottle and a lot of times i do add a whole bottle to one can of san marzano when i'm making lasagna um is there anchovy in worcestershire i believe so i believe so brenda sanitizing my hands again because i scratched my head happy new year to you thanks for coming in Love gaming, kids learning. Nice to see you here, hon. And of course, since I've been talking to you, obviously this has taken me 47 minutes. I can usually put this recipe together with the braising like in 12, 13, 14, but I've kind of lengthened things out. Just, you know, if you want to add some balsamic, you can. I mean, you don't have to. I just do because... I happen to like a lot of acid in my food. Um, love it. It's just like a game changer, especially on a slice of pizza. You, you know, pizza companies out there, a lot of them are a lot of crap right now. And to make that crappy piece of pizza taste a whole lot better because you're paying a lot of money still for that crappy pizza. If you just went out and got a little bit of balsamic vinegar or just tried it on bread or pizza you you will be pleasantly surprised with how your palate loves the note of acid a lot of people don't like pickles and i can relate to that not all pickles i like but with the right ingredients acid is necessary and for me that would be definitely balancing out sweetness in tomatoes sweetness in garlic sweetness in onion you need acid. And this has a great sear. I'll show you. Again, when it comes to like taco meat and hamburger, when you're browning, a lot of people like don't brown correctly properly. You really want to cook the hell out of that hamburger to get really good flavor. Okay, you're going to notice your tacos are going to taste so much better, giving it a little bit of sear. Okay, and that's what I've done here with the rest of the meat for my sauce. I've, I've given everything a lot of sear. 
and there's going to be a lot of font. There's a lot of fonds around the pan. That's because I've, I've given it the time that it needs. No more salt and pepper is necessary for me. The wine has been breathing for a minute. So we're going to just deglaze, you know, one time around the pan is good. If you want to go two or three times around the pan or use all the wine, I mean, it's so up to you. It's not going to ruin your sauce. Wine generally doesn't stay well. I mean, you should be drinking red wine within 24 hours anyway. So if you do wait past 24 hours and Chef Sketty said, oh, well, it's 24 hour window. It's just, okay, yes, wine does go bad after 24 hours. Have I drank wine older than 24 hours? Absolutely. It's just what happens to red wine. So I generally use a bottle within 24 hours or I just toss it because to me, it, it does go bad. Okay, I could have added the San Marzano tomato to the pot over there, but I want it to pick up all the fond. And there's also in here that you can rinse out it. So rinse it all. The lighting, why is my lighting like this today? Oh gosh, I'm sorry, everyone. I thought I had great lighting, but I guess I don't. See, you can put the water in there and get it all out. I know, you know, I'm so glad you like the boba, Anne-Marie. You want to know why? Because I just remember doing a ramen video. And when I sent you that stocking, I just wanted to show you that, like, thing that when I watch people's videos, like, maybe I don't always comment or whatever, but I do see your videos and I do see what you like. And I do see the comments, especially that are coming into me on my chats. I mentioned in a ramen video months and months and months ago, Anne-Marie, and you were like, oh, I love boba. And I just registered that as something like I knew about you or how Riz, you know, his favorite candy was the hundred grand. It's like things that I've saved up to surprise you with that. Yes, I am paying attention. And yes, I know you more than you think I do. Do you understand, Anne-Marie? I know you do because you made that video about getting the stocking and how I sent you the, the, I'm losing my mind today. I sent you the dressing or the, your oil, what do you call those things, the squirt bottles. I sent you one because I had seen your video months ago and you had said, oh, I got to remember to buy one. And I ran out that day and bought you that waiting for Santa to come fill it for you for Christmas. Yeah, I do. I'm very attentive person, even though I do have a lot of problems with my hands. So I've mentioned many, many times that if I'm not commenting in your videos or on your chats, or if I can't say hello to everybody, it's because I have a difficult time doing this with my hands. You see how my hands have been distorted and deformed over time of cooking. So yeah, that's why I, you don't, Maybe a lot of people say Chef Sketty doesn't really engage. Um, and I'm not, I never said that Anne Marie assumed that. It's just when I really, really, really feel connected to somebody, obviously I'm going to do something for you to show you that, yeah, I am a real true friend to you because I pay attention to the little things, the little things. Sometimes I'm not always listening to the bigger picture. I might be seeing something in the background that, like, kind of, especially with Anne Marie, it's the Boston thing. I have a big connection to my family in Boston and it touches my heart to see you going about with your family in that town where you live in that section, that whole area. It's because I have a lot of great memories from a long time ago. And when I see that, especially in the new England area, it really does capture my attention. And I love that so much about Anne Marie and she's a great channel. She's a great dedicated channel and herself, um, I, the, the caring involved with her and her neighbors and her and her community, I just see it. And I see that she's actually got a relationship with her cashier at CVS. And it's like, this isn't for the camera. This is Anne Marie. And I see that. 
So, and I'm hoping other people like can see that in you, Anne Marie. You have a great growing channel, and so congratulatory to you this year for me. Also, like 2023, I said for Chef Sketty, this is all about me, and that's what 2023 should be for you too. You should say to yourself, 2023 is about me. And then once you make it about you, you can certainly love others a whole lot more and have a whole lot more appreciation. And I'm just kind of repeating the words that like um, when I go in and I'm talking to my doctor about the diabetes and he just is so adamant about telling me about how important I have to make myself. And because I did that a year ago, like I beat the 3% chance of people who can beat diabetes because my doctor literally drilled it into my brain. Life is about you first. And once you believe that wholeheartedly that you are more important than anything else, then you believe that and you start living that way. And all of a sudden you're loving people a whole lot more than you used to. And you don't have to take my advice. This is just me talking to you right now about what works for me. So, hey, Clint, how you doing, honey? Nice to see you. Clint's Marble Corner. Nice to see you come in. Hey, Guitar Shocker. Happy New Year, honey. Let's check on my sauce. Look at this. I've just been kind of letting let everything get married. We're all married now. It's going to be a nice family gathering over there in the Instapot. You see how I made my spaghetti sauce? You know, a lot of people will take their basil plant and throw it in there. Um, at the end, if you're going to do that, I recommend at the end. No problem, Clint's Corner. Okay, we're just doing the spaghetti. I'm going to put it in my Instapot. Um, parsley is a pretty big ingredient in Italian cooking, and I use a lot of it, too. I parsley up my food, everybody. It's really good for your digestive system. And if you don't have parsley, then don't add it. It's just what I have. I'm adding to my spaghetti what I have today. It looks awesome. And like I said, I'm going to doctor this up with a whole lot more garlic off camera because I can just focus on my chopping. And that can go off. We've got some spaghetti for National Spaghetti Day. A thing I like to do is add also a little pat of butter in my spaghetti. I'm not going to do that today, but it's it's a great thing to do is a little pat of butter. And that's it. That's it. You're overseas, Clint's Marble Corner. Well, that's what I had mentioned. Uh, Love gaming, kids learning earlier in the video. If you have a dollar twenty-five dollar tree sauce and spaghetti or whatever, that's your spaghetti dinner tonight. It's what I have today were San Marzano tomatoes, and in the beginning of my video, I mentioned how I have like a thirty cent or a forty cent can of tomato paste. You can make spaghetti sauce out of that. It's you don't even need a tomato based sauce if you have butter and salt and pepper if you have flour and a little butter and make a roux it doesn't matter what you're putting on your spaghetti if you don't want to eat drum pasta spaghetti then eat shiitake mushroom spaghetti you're in illinois clint's marble corner yeah i was just seeing your comment i love sitting but left overseas yummy that's all. I was just a little confused. Maybe you can clarify for me. No worries, though. Anne-Marie's drooling. Awesome. I'm drooling also. My stomach is so hungry. I have been on my Special K diet, and I got the chocolatey flakes. So, oh my gosh, they're good. I need to eat. I haven't even eaten today. It's, 12, it's noon already. So I'm going to have myself some... My special K here, it's really yummy. I like to just crunch on it while I eat a cup of coffee, keep the milk out of it, save myself, you know, the nutrition calories for something else. But yeah, so I've been doing that special K thing, wellness in the new year. We'll see how long that lasts. 
If you make a roux, it's a, there's a different shades of colors to roux, honey. If you're making like gumbo for um, a Cajun roux, they like uh, 15 minutes of making a roux. So it's like really super, super dark. Um, if you're making like a mac and cheese roux, you can just stir up the flour and the butter together with, the, with your milk or even a boule sauce and use broth. Like milk doesn't always have to be the roux. You can do like a boule sauce and use any kind of broth to also make a sauce. But just a few seconds will make a roux, really. I make pretty quick roux. I don't have the patience for gumbo and filet. And Cajun cooking is one of the best foods out there. That's why it tastes so good. I mean, to make a Cajun roux takes at least 15 minutes of constant stirring. And does it make a difference? I think so, because it, it like makes its own umami the, the roux well there's the little pup hello hello izzy izzy what are you looking for hmm what are you looking for girl we just got a new dog also so if you want to check out a couple videos ago two weeks maybe we got izzy here and she's great Gaming kids learning, just woke up. I have you playing, so happy to be here. Came from Anne Marie's, oh cool. Well, thanks for coming, honey. Now that I know that, I have to give you a blue suit. Here, here Clint, so I'll give you a blue suit also. I'm not the best at giving out blue suits. Sometimes I end up timing you out because my hands shake a little bit, but I think I did it right. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that you love my videos. Thank you. That was kind. Yeah, as you can see, I've been moving everything around and my kitchen is never the same. I've moved my entire office over to the back wall now that I'm done with Vlogmas. I had my office on the other side of the kitchen and the screen is down and you can see my chandelier up there twinkling away for the new year. I've been on vacation. I went to Sebastian Inlet camping and you can see I, I took the brunt of sitting outside all night long. Yeah. I didn't like get too lick. I didn't liquor up and hurt my head. I just, when you're out there in the woods, things happen. So I did bump myself. Why do I not see Nora here? Where is she? Oh, how's Nora doing? Good. Have fun at the doctor's. I just, is that where you're at, Anne Marie's at the doctor? Did I miss somebody else? Oh, okay. Thanks. Love gaming at my doctor appointment, but I'm here. Okay. Have fun at the doctor's office. I just got a cup of coffee. I need coffee. My husband's supposed to be going to get me coffee. And he's still here because I told, I told him he had to stay here in case I needed something, <laughs> but we're going to go get coffee and I'm going to put the sauce in the Instapot. It's been bubbling away. And you notice I didn't break down the San Marzano tomatoes because in the Instapot, that's definitely going to happen. San Marzano tomatoes break down really quickly. And you know what? I forgot to show you the difference between the San Marzano and um, these guys. Let me find my trusty can opener and show you. Well, that was silly. I kind of, there I go. How I am. You know how I am. I talk about one thing one minute and the next minute I completely forget. I can't even believe I forgot I was going to open this. These are your cheaper tomatoes. And in my opinion, there's absolutely nothing wrong with these. Do they taste the same? Let's see, right out of the can. They're really delicious. Um, in my opinion, these are the tomatoes where 
when the old wife's tales, or not really an old wife tale, these are the tomatoes where you definitely need the pinch of sugar. Not so much really with San Marzano. They're sweet enough on their own. But the thing about it is, is canning tomatoes in tin creates a bitter acidness. So adding sugar will cut that out. Yeah, it has. So there's not that tin can taste to it now. It's science, everyone. Hey, 12 stones. I use the spaghetti sauce on anything. Sure, yeah, pizza for sure. It's. I've got red meat. I've got red meat. I have um, sautéed and braised a whole bunch of pork, cutlet, homemade sausage. It, it's not really homemade. It's sausage that I used and I formed it into sausage. See? Pepperoni. The pork cutlet. The beef is already in here. So we're going to add everything into the pot and cook it. I'm going to go and get heading out. 12 Stones Ranch. Hope you had a great new year. I haven't made your pump, your sister's pumpkin uh cheesecake bread yet but I definitely will stay tuned for that and also stay tuned because I was tagged twice to do a tw 10 questions um Neil's comic and games tagged a surfer a surfer tagged me and Vicky Wells tagged me 10 questions about rando things so I have to do that also and my blood sugar is starting to dip a little bit. So I'm going to go have my cereal and my coffee. And thanks for coming today. I'm like an hour and six minutes. It seems like it's been like 15 minutes. Have a great day. Happy National Skeddy Day to you. And I will catch you on the fly. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming, everybody.